booking Abrams show. I'm a little bit early or right on time. Usually when you point at me to start the monologue, when we watch the show, it's like a split second late. So I tried to chime in. I tried to anticipate Put your finger up like this. I try to anticipate when you're going to point do at Do that. Me. It's not <laughs> easy to do that. No. <laughs> use use my psychic yeah, powers. I'm just making sure I'm looking into the right camera angle. I don't think. Okay, hold on. Let me get it. Oh, I'm which one do you have? Angle. Oh, you have your there iPad. We there we go. There we go. Much there we go. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fabulously. Your Last hair looks fabulous. <laughs> Doesn't it though? It does. I mean, it was look, very easy. I mean, very easy look to pull off. You, you look, look from, from this. this angle, I mean, I mean, I mean even, even in live, live but uh, straight, straight on, on. I mean, you, you look, look like what's your name, Carrie Washington. Washington. Stop it. You know, I I get, get that. Carrie Washington vibes. Yeah, it's because I have this kind of this no at all the teeth. It's all the teeth that I have. Well, well you're, you're lucky. lucky. I I don't, I don't have, have a model teeth, teeth like you do. do. My wife Liz, you know, she has like. Perfect, perfect teeth. teeth. My, My dad, dad always says, says like, make a uh, mold of your teeth, Liz, because, because he could, you know, people could model them. Hmm. Their teeth after I mean, I, I'm, I'm always jealous, jealous of people who have, not, not jealous, but have great teeth. teeth. You know, you have yeah. really great teeth. Those it's amazing. Real teeth, right? Those are my real teeth. And apparently my yeah, brother, awesome. and it's a genetic thing. My brother and my father both have almost perfect, perfect teeth. teeth. Yeah. And my brother and I, who's one of these people with perfect teeth, okay. um, I don't know that either of us went to the dentist. See, now that my mom's passed away, I can tell all her. Okay. Memory. What about orthodontist? Like, we didn't go anywhere. And I was like wow. 20, when I moved out, I was like 23. Okay. And I had some wisdom tooth coming in and, I, okay. and they were painful and I had no choice. And I had to go to the dentist. And the first Get question they ask you mm -hmm. is when's the last time you've been to the dentist? Okay. And I literally never been to the dentist. Okay. I don't, I don't know, know that. that. I mean, but you should probably. But I had that. no cavities. I had no problems. I've never had a problem with my teeth at all. I think, I think sometimes, sometimes I, I don't generally have, have a lot of cavities when I go, but I also go to the, the dentist, dentist probably. probably for a cleaning now. Yeah. Cleaning. Yeah. Well, I know that I know better. Yeah. yeah exactly. But uh, you know, the first time I had it, the first time I had to go to the dentist, I was twenty three years old. I had these two wisdom teeth, and I was so terrified. I'm laying back in the chair and all these sounds, everything was unfamiliar. It was like I was a seven-year-old. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Going into a strange place. And this dentist, who all I knew about dentists were that maybe they were a little crazy, kind of like postmen. Sure, sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. And they, they like and they, they go nuts and like, you know, shoot up a bunch of people. Or I don't know where I got that from. In the neighborhood. So there he is, and he's and he's coming down into my face and going into my mouth, and this drill, and then I was just like terrified, and I was trying to hold still, but I literally had tears falling out of my eyes. Ooh. He goes, "What are you crying for?" And I went, "Holy God, shit, yeah, this is dentist. a horror movie." Your dentist sounds awful. He was horrible, and I, that was my first experience. And so then I went again a few years later and got my teeth cleaned, okay. and the uh, the. Um, the uh hopefully a little better experience well i did have a better experience it was a female this time and she okay. wasn't the dentist she was a dental assistant I that's guess. who you want to go to yeah the dental assistants are generally a lot more gentle than yeah. i had a dentist growing up who was famous for being really rough and so his, his dental assistant would be booked up for a year and they're like oh but dr stone's available today like, yeah 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 year. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a fun experience, mm -hmm. but uh, you anything know, with teeth, teeth, it's like when they, they drill try, in there, like, you okay? I'm like, dude, if, if you're the sound, the sound, the sound like hits your ears, ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never get used to that, huh? No, you never get used to it, but uh, yeah, so all of us, knock on wood, and our family have uh, pretty good teeth, good teeth, you got them G, G, teeth, them good teeth. Yeah. Well, you're lucky, um, and we were talking about beforehand. Um, well, obviously, obviously your hair looks beautiful, but we were talking about, um, <laughs> we were talking about, how will they know? How will they, they know? For <laughs> men and women, Look, like we were talking, talk oh, wow. We were talking about <laughs> men are starting, starting to wear girdles or myrtles. Yeah. Um, male girdles where they're pulling it up above their gut to hide their fat their tummy. ass gut. Why not <laughs> yeah. work out? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's kind, kind of for me personally, plastic surgery. The, the bee sting lips, uh, fake ass. I don't, I don't look, I'm not hating on these women or men, whatever you need to make 
your life feel fulfilling and some whatever makes you happy that's what you should do yeah if, well, if it, it makes, makes you happy to look like a plastic surgery, <laughs> then so, so be it so be it no agreed but, however uh, however you know the funny thing is we were talking and so i'm wearing a wig okay this is the wig i had a very but it looks amazing. amazing i mean I thank you, you. Look, I, mean, I mean it really i mean it's i, I didn't know. know you didn't know well I think I uh, because, because you told me. I told you, that. but uh, I had a different wig on earlier. Oh, you did? That was a different wig. Oh. Right. So I came home and changed my wig, put on okay. some makeup, and. So you're wigging, wigging out. out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, the, we, were, we were discussing before the podcast, um, um, you know, so if I were to go see my guy, your guy, I would fix my hair a different way. I wouldn't show up with a wig on. Why? Well, for me personally, and I don't know if I can speak for anyone other than me. Yeah, that's, honestly, that's all we can do. Um, I feel like it's not, it's fake. It's not my hair. Okay. You can't pull on this. If if I'm having sex with someone, he can't pull on this. What, what happens? happens? I'm going to say, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> if he starts to pull, because it's going to come slam off. So it's, so it's not, not attached, attached at all. No, I don't, oh, okay. I don't do all that extra. And stuff. what do you what have, have under that? that? It's just my it's, hair. Your hair is in a cap. It's like in a no. It's just a, in a, a a French braid. Oh, oh interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I mean honestly, honestly, the, the thing, thing, the things, things women, women have to do. do right. And it's so silly. Now, I would wear this out in the marketplace to take care of my errands or you no know, I mean, podcast. But if I'm going to be in a physical, you know, if I'm going to go work out or right. have sex or exactly. whatever, I'm going to wear something different. And the we, the reason I wouldn't want to wear a wig during sex is because I wouldn't want to subject my partner to that, that those limitations. Those, those limitations, limitations, right. right. If he's, he's like, like uh, really want to pull the hair and you're like, mm. yeah, I mean, if he gets that inclination, yeah. I want him to, I'm trying to fix the bangs. You're trying to fix the bangs. Yeah. If I he mean, gets that inclination, inclination I don't yeah, want him to, you know. To pull you have your to be careful. Out out, but what right? if it's, it's kind, kind of just like a reveal and you have your hair underneath, underneath ready to go? Is that possible? I don't know if that's possible. Like, like you, you have, have a French braid, whatever, whatever you have, but it looks good. And it's it does go. not look good. June, and you're like, let's fucking get yeah, No, yeah. no, no. It, it goes from now. it goes from Kerry Washington to, to set it Aunt Jemima. At least I said Real fast. Oh, oh my god, so, so sexually, it's like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, get you get Carrie, Carrie back, back. <laughs> Carrie back <laughs> where'd she go? Yeah, yeah. They, don't they don't even call, call it Aunt Jemima anymore, it's just, it's just called, called fucking syrup. syrup. They <laughs> oh, they took it away. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Ben, ben he's, gone. he's still there. Oh, Uncle, no, Uncle Ben, ben and Auntie Bob and all of them are gone. They booted all the fucking old, old black boats off of General Mills' boxes. It, it, it was a little. Um, it was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the old man off. Yeah, yeah, you know. And, and Uncle, Uncle ben, ben, I mean, my I don't, I, don't, I don't know what white people were joking about when they brought home Aunt Jemima. What do you mean? But black people, like, I don't know. Like, when you see that, you know, big fat woman with, you know. Do you think white people thought thought nothing of it? Nothing at all? No, white people. Well, black people were making hella jokes and just having a good old time. Talking about it. We were doing it. Mama dancing and everything. Porn to serve. It's your mama. You know, this is. Slave, manny, stereotype depiction of, like, a. Um, yeah, Aunt, Aunt Jemima. Jemima. Aunt like, Jemima. I mean, in, come on. I think the reason so many white people didn't have a problem with it is because a lot of affluent white people grew up with Aunt Jemima in their right. kitchen raising right. them. Right, right, I mean, right. That's many, right. There's so many kids in the Midwest and the South that were raised by black women. Right. You know, out here in Los Angeles, uh, you know, our nannies are all, all descent because right. it, there's so many people. But if you're in somewhere... Um, uh, Midwest, South. I yeah, mean, if general, you're, I mean, you know, if, uh, if 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 a if a if you know, a, a rural sort of white right. family that's well to do yes. is looking for a nanny. If you're yes. fat and black, then you have a leg up over the competition. God, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's terrible. unfortunately, and, and it's, it's not. not no, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's not, not terrible. terrible. I, I guess, guess it is. It is what it is. Uh, it's probably uh, it's be- there's a reason. It's just a weird thing, though. That there's so much racism, racism can still live, and then the irony of you were almost raised by a by one. right. Oh, we but, would breastfeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah master's yeah. children. Exactly. That's crazy. Right. Imagine how comfortable you must feel suckling from a black woman's breast as a kid, and then growing up, growing up, and feeling comfortable. Right. 
but then again, uncomfortable because of what you've been taught about. Exactly. Stereotypes. Yes, yes it's, it's very confusing. I imagine it's the, the whole, whole the whole history of it at all is very confusing. Well, well I'm just we took, um, a, we took a turn for the. Well, well, here's this. Here's how we tie it in with this wig. Okay, bring it back. This is my um, negotiating wig. This okay. is what I wear when I'm negotiating I was gonna say. with white people. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> so that is your uh, got invited to a high profile white wedding right. in Dubai. This is my assimilation no. wig. Assimilation <laughs> wig. That's really funny. It, 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 it is. is. I mean, that's, that's what's so sad. sad. It is. That is the assimilation wig. That is going to get your bank loan wig. Yeah. All of the above. I'm an attorney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it's unfortunate that you have to uh, sort of um, navigate that way. Yeah. Well, but, I, was, uh, I made an interesting, interesting discovery, which, which let, let me pull, pull this up real quick. Are you familiar with, with the artist Billy Eilish? Eilish? Yes. He of is like you're... redhead. No, no it's, it's, it's a, a female. female. Oh. Um, no. Billy Eilish. Now, let me show you what she just all she has is videos of her generally live in concert. And she just always, she's, she's so dressed down. Is she a black woman or a white woman? No, no she's, she's a, a white, white woman. woman. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. She's kind of punk rock. -ish. She's kind of punk rock, but this isn't really doing it the justice I'm looking for. Her. But like, she generally, this is how she dresses. And like biker pants and a big blue shirt. But I guess okay. my point is, is that, that no, I was getting off. But, but that, that a black female artist could not come out that relaxed, just, just with, with her hair all about, right. wearing a big shirt, bike, you know, tight. Um, yeah, tight. are you kidding me? Let me let me go to work. When I used to work, uh, I used to work for NBC Universal and Technicolor, and most sure. of my coworkers were white. Sure, I think I was the only black person working on the floor on my floor. Right, and. You know, build build the quota. Quota. yeah. Well, I would straighten my hair like this wig, my own right. hair, mm -hmm. and um, and then you know, if I decided to wash my hair and let it go back curly and natural and show up for work, natural, curly, oh. all the white people in the office, oh my god, oh. look at your hair, wow. and like all fucking day wow. already. Was, was it, it positive, positive or? It was like they it were is. trying to be positive, but it, but it was annoying because, because they were, were so shocked. Right. At what my hair could do, hmm. I guess. Who or knows? or was it what your hair could do? Or was it the look of really what they were saying of this looks like a more relaxed so look? Than, curly. Right. Or compared to this look that you have, the assimilation wig, is something they're more used to seeing on themselves. So when they see you with more of your natural hair, it sticks out more. Potentially. Yeah, I don't know. It's a. I just think that the mind of a white woman. The mind of a white woman. And some people, some white people, just are are uncomfortable by your natural hair. I don't, I don't know, know if it's, it's uncomfortable. Look, here's, here's a, secret a secret about white people. Okay. All white, white people, people love black, black people, people, but they they, they just, just love them on the surface. <laughs> they love the entertainment. Right. They love the sports. Right. They right. love the swag. They, they love everything black people create. For the world, they soak it all up, except mm. being black or the black experience. Or right, so maybe when they look at the hair, they can't understand how it. Changes. I mean, look, they want they want your and lips, so it's they want your curves, they they want your slam dunk, they want your your uh, rap, you know, abilities, they want your dance abilities, everything. If you look at it, it's like it goes back to the Elvis, Eminem. Mm, Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber if we, we can package, package it in somebody white, we're going to make more money. And yeah, that uh, unfortunately is uh, our predicament. It, uh, you know, and, and, and that's because if you look back to history, not to get too far off on a uh -oh. tangent. All right. Yeah, I forgot. I had a little point there and I kind of got off. That's okay. So, but if you look back in history, black people, I mean, we were essentially free entertainment from the time we got here. Sure. Okay. And I mean, even when black, when white people started their form of minstrel shows and vaudeville, right, right. Do, you, do you remember blackface? I mean, yeah, clearly the, the black like experience. Al, Al Jolson was a huge blackface white performer who was one of the most famous comedians right. in the and, world. Right, like, vaudeville. 
doing right. blackface. Right. You know, I mean, it was song was Mammy. Mammy. Right. You know, Mammy. Mammy. Yeah. How we Mammy. move, how we sing, how we move, how we laugh. And, 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 it was yeah, always an interest. Blackface. blackface I, think I think that was my point. Is a good example, example that that's, that's how much white, white people love black yeah, people. Exactly. But we don't need if we don't need you there. And, and we, we can, can do, do blackface, we're fine, fine with that. that. You yes. know, and it's, mm -hmm. white, white people, people have never attached themselves to the white, the black struggle here in America, America or the history of the racism. And, and they, they love black people, but they just actually don't love black people. They're, you know, it's just. I got to tell you, I, I, you know, I can talk so about. Far apart yeah. Weird. Yeah. There's there's always sort of disconnections and, and, and certain, you know, unmistakable uh, connections. But uh, I got to tell you, it feels very strange talking about racial issues with my negotiating wig on. <laughs> this right. is my assimilation yeah, wig. Your, yeah. It's is, very rare that I wear a wig. Right. Well, but, so okay. back to wigs, though. Yeah. What, what if, if a guy, guy was saying, guy has spandex, spandex, but he, he also has, has a little, a little dick, dick pad, hmm. you know, or a little, little wad, wad spreader, spreader that makes, makes his jump. It is a little, turn off. So you're dancing, dancing and, and it's, it's like, like a little soft cucumber type thing in his, his pants. pants. You're at the club, you're grinding, you guys are dancing and getting hot. Might, might want to go, go back, back to his hotel. hotel. He's, He's in, in town, from out of town. town. <laughs> He's got a really nice hotel. <laughs> on the, on the sunset, sunset strip, all you got to do is walk across, across the street to his hotel. hotel. You get across, across the street to his hotel, hotel. get hot and heavy. You pull his pants down, and he's been faking the funk. And yeah, he's got like a, he has a sock roll. It's in a there. pair of underwear with this with this. He is so fire. And he has a micro penis. Get the entire fuck out of my life. Right. You know, and that's it's a turn off. That's, that's how, how I feel, feel with some of these women with, with the makeup. Oh, no. There's so many beautiful, beautiful women that I think go for this, and I'll call it the Kim Kardashian look. I but know. The man, it's you know, unfortunate. And like Kim, Kim Kardashian to me is so overdone. There's nothing attractive about her because, because there's something beautiful, beautiful about a woman using her natural beauty and accenting it a little bit. But this over accentuation of fakeness. Uh, like, like the movie, movie I'm gonna, gonna get, get you, sucker. And the scene <laughs> oh where yeah. Like, oh, yo, yo, we're, we're just gonna, gonna you know, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Like, really, and starts, starts taking her leg off, off takes her eyelashes, her wig, her booty, everything, her booty, everything. Her everything. And, and it, it was, was so ahead, ahead of its time. time. Well, I think, and you know, we were talking a little before the podcast. I feel like if, like, okay, so you know, everyone, it's not a secret that I had my breasts done. No, no, it's, it's not, not a secret. secret. And I'm very happy with the job my doctor right. did. And I think that's good. That, that and, and unless I told a guy, he wouldn't know right. that my breasts were fake. Yeah. yeah. And it's not something I necessarily broadcast, but I'm not ashamed of it either. You just, just did broadcast it. I do sometimes. <laughs> no, I mean you broadcast it. Right. Broadcast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But but my point is yeah. I think that I feel like when I get naked and jump into the shower, sure. Like ready to wash my hair. I'm yeah. feel I feel comfortable with how I look. I like the way my breasts look. Yeah. I don't have a huge ass, but it's not flabby right. or super flat. Sure. Like you know, my hair is what it is. I do different things to it. Yeah. But I mean, I like the way my hair looks when it's natural and wet. Of course. But um, now when it dries. <laughs> That's another thing. And your mama. <laughs> Hilarious. I mean, I think too. Uh, so I think are... that if you're going into the shower. Like that kind of nakedness. I want a pair of breasts. If your stuff doesn't fall off, like I'm gonna guess you get, get you sucker. Sure. Then I think that you are in a sort of safe range. Agreed. Right. Well, look, look I, I think breasts. Like also... it's not offensive that you're not you're not fake. Right. No. I mean, nobody. Nobody's fake. It's, it's just look. I mean, any surgery, surgery it is what you want to do. You're still yourself. Well, some women go. Over, some people go overboard. So, uh, yeah. Some people go overboard. And, and it becomes, becomes an addiction. addiction. But like, like with, with fake breasts, breasts, I understand like, like from a woman's perspective, it, it opens you up to bikinis, it opens you up to dress Different acting roles. Right. Different yeah. acting yeah. roles. Uh, different, different hotel, hotel rooms. rooms. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, maybe. No, I'm joking. And, and, and I think, like, like you said, it's more of a confidence. But the ass, I just think ladies get into Pilates class, do your squats. Do squats. You know, you can't. You can't. You know, I can't wait, squat my titties into, yeah. titties into a perfect Like, my kids up. ruined my titties because I breastfed both of exactly. them. Exactly. The oldest one was the hungriest one. Oh, yeah, I mean, it was, was a problem. I've, I've seen, seen no. no. 
they, they literally, literally suck, suck you dry. dry. So you, yeah. you understand the breast, but an ass is something that you are able to make adjustments to on your own. Right, you can do squats. And when you have skinny legs and big fat ass, it's just like Kim Kardashian, it doesn't match. A fat ass is supported by a strong, thick leg. Track booty is what I call it. You know, I was telling you before, my my, my son, son uh, said, said to my, my wife the other day, Ooh, mom, mom I, I love, love your juicy, juicy fat, fat, fat booty. booty. And, and I, I was like, like Where did and you hear that from? How old is this? I was like, Do you hear that on YouTube? Oh, it's a little goes, one? He's like, No, daddy, you, you always smack, smack mom on the butt and say, Ooh, that's, that's a good, a juicy, juicy, fat, fat booty. And I'm like, Oh, God. He told on your ass. Yeah, he told on my ass. And I was like, Whatever. Well, hey, look, you know, I was thinking about it. At least I'm showing my kids. How to compliment a woman. Oh, yeah. And like being, being in a relationship, would you rather have me smack your mom across the face or on her ass? One Kids are like, I choose one. fat, fat booty. Yeah, fat, fat, <laughs> ding, ding. We, we choose, choose fat, 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 fat booty. For 500? Yeah. Fat, fat, fat booty. And we are talking about my wife is a confident uh, woman. And when I say fat, fat booty, that is like perfect apple bottom. Yeah. Right? That is a nice round steak filet mignon. Track, track booty, booty does, does her lunges, squats. And you just need, by the way, ladies, you just need that one angle where you can capture that apple bottom. That's right. Round, round. The I'm round, happy because I, I know my angle. If I ever wanted to take a picture. I know of my somebody, angle. Somebody, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know my angle. Because nobody has a fat, fat booty with every angle. He's True. like, maybe they do. I mean, there, there, are, you know, there, there are, are people who have fat, fat. Booty. No matter what yeah, they're they doing, beautiful, 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 perfect asses. asses. I mean, well, let's not act like, like that doesn't exist. exist. Okay, there fine. are perfect, beautiful booties, but yeah, there's, there's different types, types there's different angles. angles. We were talking about some people, people think the model of 5'10, totally skinny, coke and cigarettes body, but to me, that's, that's not attractive to be so skinny. skinny. I, like, I, like I like some meat on the bone to where, if like, say they were hanging on a cliff and I'm falling down. I can grab, grab onto, onto her ass, ass. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on. Like, like I'm like, I'm good. But like, like what do you do with some model? Bitch? With no ass. Yeah. Like, gonna, where you? you make her slide off the cliff. I'm gonna slide off the cliff. I'm gonna slide off the cliff. I'm gonna fucking fat Pilates booty, you know? Right. Booty, you know? <laughs> or like, you know, <laughs> you know some, some of this, this you yeah. know? I can hang on for dear life. And I think that's, but. It's, it's just, you know. Like well, I'm gaining some weight. I've been eating a lot of sushi. You. Apparently, sushi. Sushi does that? It, it's fattening with all the rice. And, okay. Red you know, rice, rice and meat. Yeah, avocado no. and. Yeah, I think women, all the things. It's, you know, I don't know. Somebody told me it was fattening. I've been eating a lot of it and I'm gaining weight. I mean, we, we all, all worry about our weight. I mean, I was on. My son, son was saying, Adam, I'm insecure about my body. I'm like, oh. Join the, Join club, the club, you know what I mean? Oh. He's, he's 12 and, and he mm-hmm. has a little body fat. And I'm like, you're 12. Your pre-pubescent or your your yeah, he's gonna, gonna stretch out. Doctor. Yeah, no. And, as soon as his hormones hit, poor guy, he doesn't I, know that. I've, I've always been, been uncomfortable with my body. You know what I mean? mean even though people, people would consider, consider me someone. She should be like, I've always been comfortable with my body. Kids, suck it up. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing for my wife. She has one of these athletic bodies. Mm. Who you know, like the comedian Akila came to my house this last weekend. Was like, Sam, that's your wife. I know. I thought you had some just. Fat heifer. Hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. No, Liz is awesome. There's no, no way. way. She's beautiful. No, 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 she's she's fit. Not, she wasn't she was disrespecting Liz. She was disrespecting no, I get it. me. No, I get it. <laughs> she's, she's like, like Sam, Sam, you're so I thought ugly. you were. I, I thought, Sam, how do you. I didn't think you could bring Pull down off somebody anything more than a hot as Liz. Uh, Chicago, Chicago five, basically, is what she <laughs> Chicago <laughs> three. Chicago five is like a three in LA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe a two. Just some <laughs> fat goth girl. No, no offense. No offense to fat goth girls. I love well, all of you. But I'm, I'm into, into like an athletic woman. Natural. So when somebody, yeah, natural, natural and a beautiful girl, I have to be physically attracted. So it's funny for somebody to think, see me like, oh, Sam, I assumed your wife was just out of shape or something. I feel like... What does that say about me? Well, it just means maybe a little Barney Rubble-ish, just a tad. <laughs> okay, so now you just call me Barney Rubble. Not even fucking Fred Flintstone, okay? You call me the short, short square The blonde! Oh, hey, y'all. Uh, hey, Fred. Hey, Fred. Yeah. How did, How did you, you get, get such a hot piece of ass, Barney, you bitch? 
and you know, know I met my, my wife a long time ago, so it's definitely it's not like she's into me for my money because Lord knows it's not you know she could have done better, but she she married you though you know she wanted to get on the wild side she could have married some. Perfect, perfect little Catholic, Catholic private, private school boy, and it would have been kind of boring. Hmm. You know, she could have gone to church every Sunday with her whole family, but. I had an analogy that said she was going to say, but fake bodies, and it just fake bodies to my mind. To me. Well, well I, I just think eventually you have to be yourself. You have to get, get naked. The most yeah, important. eventually you have to show your real yeah, self. So I remember and if you I look read. so different yeah. in your real natural state yeah. than you do when you're made up, that's then haunting. Then that's a little bit of betrayal. Mm -hmm. It's a little I, bit of deceit. It it's a deception. I had, I had a friend. He had a girlfriend, girlfriend way back, back in college, college, and you know he made the joke. He's like, "I'm like, where is she?" He's like, "Oh, she's putting her face on." Gross. And it, it is. is. It's like. like in, in a, a sense, sense, she would even wake, wake up before him to put makeup really? on so he never, never saw, saw her. her real natural state. Oh, my God. How can you live like that? That can't be comfortable. It's, it's not. not. I, I really honestly think, think maybe it is me. I was, it, was it was funny. funny. I was in a women's studies class back in college. I was the only guy in there. And, and I kind of got, got uh, booed out, out of it for making this comment. comment. <laughs> but I said, you, you should be able to be comfortable enough in a relationship where you can, like, walk in and your wife's taking a shit or you're taking a shit and your wife walks in i'm not okay. saying you have to go in there and sniff, it and up sniff and enjoy the shit. right inhale just yeah, inhale and and if it happens out. sure but you should be comfortable enough right. in your most disgusting state with your spouse that with your spouse come on but i don't believe there's a lot of people in their relationship a lot of people anytime these women are like, hey, you're, you're funny about that the kind of thing like say i'm on divorce and i don't yeah. think the problem with my husband and i was that i didn't take a shit in front Next of him and all the women unless and i was like okay, okay so i'm the only guy in here being like trying, trying to learn this shit, shit. so fuck you guys and i they left kicked the class you out today. you kicked your ass out um, well unless you're rich enough to have beautiful you know du double bathrooms because that's ideal but I, I oh, that's what I was gonna say. There's a level, a level of comfort, comfort though, and right. it gets back, back to the fakeness. Right? You if you, if you, like, if one of the toilets is you know waiting for the plumber, and then you guys have to do it, like you're not gonna be like, ah, get out of here. Right. right. He's got to go downstairs and use mm. the guest bath. No. And if you're, you're ugly, ugly, I'd rather, rather know, know that than see that, that you're always just completely. If you're ugly, I would rather know that your poop smell matches your face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, I always feel I'm, 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 I'm kind, kind of a shallow, shallow person in that, that where I really, uh, looks are very important to me. Now, of course, soul and heart are yes. most important, important yeah. but I, I really have to also have that physical connection. Attraction. Um, yeah. and, I and I think, think look, I've been in a relationship for a long, long time, and that is part, part of the through line. line. I, don't I don't know my wife, wife of course, she jokes, you know, I don't, I don't have a six pack. Like, I think about sometimes I get insecure. What, what would, would her body be the equivalent, equivalent of on a man? Right. right. So, so Liz, Liz would probably, probably like, I, I would be a guy who's probably pretty, pretty well in shape, shape has a you know, She's I'm definitely like, prettier than you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, pretty much. I outkicked my coverage. But again, but again sometimes, sometimes you wonder with the women. women that, that doesn't But matter. we don't care. I try, I try to keep, keep myself in my mind as sexy as I can be. But Yeah, she's she finds you sexy. Right. right. I mean, not, you should see the guy that broke my heart. Oh my God. He was, yeah. I mean, I mean he's really handsome to me. Oh, oh, he, he wasn't was. cute. He was handsome to me. No, I, he's big, okay. fat, tall guy. Oh, okay. She, she might not find that attractive. Right. Liz, Liz is more into like, like physically, physically fit, like, 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 like a lot of them. Like, like, yeah. Right. But I loved him. So he was, every part of his skin is, is attractive. To of him. course. Period. Yeah. So that's the, the beauty that you guys have. As, as men. Right. And that, that's how we see you. However, oh, we're so lucky. Right. The pressure on a woman, it is probably not a tremendous pressure, even mm -hmm. in a love relationship, but it's, you know, that we don't want to let ourselves go. Right. Right. And that's kind of a rule that applies to women. Of that's course. That, it, it, that's socially go. enforced, you know, with, with, with women. Right. right. And, and men, men can, can let, let themselves go as long as you can. It's money. okay. You, you can, can always still get, get a, a woman, woman as if you were 20, 20 years old. old. Yeah, that's. True. I mean, I know, I know so many guys my age, I'm 45, 45 who, who like, like they're you know single and divorced, and, and they're, they're just they're just scouring through 25 year olds. Mm. 
And, and most, most women, women don't, don't generally, generally go, go back and, and do that. that. No, no, they're, they're, they're not, not like, like. I mean, there's a such thing as a cougar, and I tried it. I dipped my toe into that, and boy, did that stink! I mean, these guys' apartments. Oh Jesus! Oh, yeah, like they're young, true. they're immature. Yeah. They don't take their trash out. They're and, fucking. And they're broke. And blah blah yeah, blah. Immature, immature men are not, not as no sexy. Thanks. I. I Women, women are, are much, much sexier, sexier younger, younger than men are. Then, because first of all, yeah, men, men look, look like little boys. boys. Women, women can be 21 and still, still look like, like wow, she looks like a woman. Like She looks yeah, so gorgeous. Right, look at that. Right. Right. But, but a man, man can, can still be in great shape, shape but, he but he still, still looks, looks like a teenager. teenager. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah give me somebody so. over 50. Like, I, yeah. But there's cougars and cheetahs. Like I was saying, you know, cougars. What's a cheetah? A cheetah is like, say, my wife is 45. She's a cheetah. She's still... Somebody, somebody who people, people would, would like, like to come, come after, after and they like, but she's fat. Am I a cheetah? Never... I, 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 you're a cheetah. Because I'm 47 yeah, and I don't look 47. Like, like people, people are still chasing you, you but when you, you get, get to a cougar status, status you're, you're a, a good looking older woman, woman but, you've but you've thrown, thrown it all, all out and you now, now are on the attack. Oh, maybe I've been a cougar all my life then. That just means you're on attack? Yeah, you're on the attack. Like you're like cougars, like women over 50. Will, will jump, jump you, you and <laughs> sure that they want to fuck. You know, you know what I mean? They're at that point in their life. Like, right. You know what? I don't, I don't care, care who thinks I'm a fucking hoe. I'm out of town on a girl's yeah. trip. And do, do you want to fuck? fuck? You know? Right. And, and you're, you're like, like because whoa. Because we ain't got no time. Like, you're getting like, easy. Right. Whoa, aggressive <laughs> cougar. Where a cheetah would, would not be like that. Be like, oh my God, that woman is just gorgeous. Well, I, um. But she's not going to give it up so easy. Right. These 50 year olds are total, yeah. total hoes. Cheetah, cheetah runs, runs away. away, they're fast. Well, I don't know what's going to happen to me because I got three more years before I'm 50. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I think, think you can, can look, you, you can, can keep, keep that, that cheetah phase as, as long as you can. But there is that point where people are like, mm, I'm a cougar now, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to start fucking hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I go a hunting, go ahead. I'm not thinking about labels, <laughs> I'm just a you're, you're, yeah, you're just fucking like. <laughs> Right. You, you come like, here. Yeah, yeah, my, my, my friend, friend used to say, like, like you start trying, trying to just sink your talons into their back, their shoulders, and just <laughs> bite them on the neck and take them down. <laughs> well, well I, I like uh, my men. I like my men, you know, no matter how old they are, mm. or sort of what shape they are. Sure. Um, one, he's got to be intelligent. I'm not even going to be attracted. I'm a sapiosexual, sure. right? I'm attracted to your brain. If your yeah. brain's pretty, Agreed. I'm. I'm I'm hot for you. That's, That's pretty, pretty much, much across, across the board. board. Stupid, Stupid people, people are not very attractive. Not very attractive. Even and, if they are attractive. And if he's wearing a girdle, or, and I don't mind if a guy dyes his beard. You know, women get dragged for making ourselves up, and some of us do go overboard with the makeup, but men are doing things too. They're of wearing course. girdles, they're yeah, yeah, they're, they're doing, doing that beard. Dying dying their beard. Dying their beard. So women, I feel like silver is like, if, if I grow my beard, beard you see I have some like kind of gray Yeah. Beard. But, but if, if, if I grow my beard, beard out, it is, it's silver now. It's sexy. It's, but it's a actually lot of women like, like that. Distinguishing dye, for right. a man. It some age. Yeah. It's not that I'm turned off by men that dye their beards, but it's like I'd rather him be more authentic. Right. Um, how it, because the or he's trying to look younger, under, he's trying to look, look younger. younger, right? Whereas you're admitting you're a little older and that's sexy to me. That is yeah, bad. I mean, we are okay with older to us. That means you're distinguished, you're right. mature, you probably have your shit together. I think in LA, a lot of these guys are trying to look younger because they're trying to act in certain roles of or course. trying to be creative, or that so I understand older. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's why, why you, you see, see a lot, lot of older couples. couples. In, in LA, LA or, or older men, men with younger, younger women, women. Yeah. because it, it takes, takes so long for a man here to mature and, and get established where he's even thinking, thinking about having a relationship or can even attract a certain type of woman mm. because, because like, like we've, we've talked, talked about this before, before most of these guys, guys if you're riding a skateboard and living in a little apartment no offense to those guys that like you know, you know 45, 45, 50 years old. It's you better just, dye your beard gray. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's hard <laughs> to attract. So, a woman because, right. Like, mm, no, yeah. thanks. Because, because women, women also we talk about are attracted, attracted by motivation. motivation. And I think you maybe said, said this, this um, or, or somebody, somebody did it about um, inspiring. Uh, if, if, if you inspire someone or yeah. to be better than, than what they are, are that's sexy, or you believe in somebody, what they're doing. And, and you, you try, try to help them get there, get better. Get yeah, that is sexy to a woman that I believe in you. And yeah, I mean, and, and, and most situations, no, no, in most situations, 
if you're if someone is inspiring you, mm -hmm. it means that they are doing something, have acquired something, or are acquiring something that you respect and that you admire. Right. So you're not going to have a dude on a skateboard, you know. Um, I, I doubt that a guy on a skateboard is going to do much inspiring in my life. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. not. Yeah. If you compare. Right. Yeah. And so, and so you know, those are material no thing things. Giving somebody course. over 50 who's right. created some kind of legacy or is creating a legacy mm -hmm. because that's sexy. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've, I've seen, seen women, women, a perfect example. example. You, you can, can see women, women are so beautiful. beautiful. But you're like, hey, uh, you guys want to hang, hang out? Like, no, I'm tired. I'm gonna go. But then someone's like, like, sure, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's do a shot of tequila, or, or let's turn on some music, or you guys want to, what do you, you want to do, do now? You know, women and men, like, like when it gets late at night, men, men are always, always trying to just get women drunk, talk, talk them into staying up late so we can hook up, right? That's the goal of the evening is to hook up. But women most times are always the first say, oh, I'm so tired. I gotta, no, I, I shouldn't drink anymore. You know what I mean? How many times, or at least in my experience, and that's why I also I love my wife so much, is because she's the type, like, sure. Sure, what, what do you, you want to do? do? Yeah, yeah, she's the one, she's like okay. I said, out drinking me. I'm like, all right, can we, we go, go home at 5 a.m.? Well, it done. sounds like you guys are into each other. Well, well we, we are, but I mean, women in general, and I know this, I hate to generalize, but they, they shut, shut down, down the fun, fun most times. I think when they're shutting down the fun, they just are at a crossroad with that person. Well, yeah, yeah. they're like, we're not going to fuck. I don't I'm feel like home. touching you. Right, but, but where men are always like, like they're always ready. ready. That is the goal of every man when we go out is to fuck. Let me tell you something. If it's that much of a challenge to get your woman to fuck you, then mm. you're, you're having a problem. Because right. every woman that I know I would say everyone, a yeah. lot of women, most women. If I'm into a guy and I'm alone with him, right? I want to touch him. But I'm not talking about it. I'm saying like a woman you, you meet, like uh, uh, out, uh, out, out of just someone, or just, just yeah, yeah, most times, like, like say it's uh, a, a few, few guys, guys hanging, hanging out, out, a few girls. We're going. We we're back doing karaoke. And oh, I see. Yeah, no, time to go. Out. Guys will always hang in there till the bitter end. Yeah, it's, it's always girl that has to go. All right, end. party's over. Yes, yes it's, it's always. always like, like, I don't want to get so drunk that I'm fucking everybody's dig tonight. Exactly. I mean, a girl's got to have some boundaries. Exactly, campus. but I mean, and I think, I think that that's probably is the reason because women right. know, like, okay, that, I mean, you guys are on the prowl. That's what guys want. I mean, right. I suck dick, fuck, or I need to get out of here. Right. Um, so I think like that's our job. If you're going late night back to somebody's hotel, back to somebody's apartment, just know. Men are hoping, or at least thinking, that, that you're... Yeah. Well, that's what men hope and think about every everything. every time they have a conversation with a woman. Yeah, yeah or, or no, no every, every time we're just living. living. I mean, they, they say, say no, no, no. About sex, oh, living, like, even when you're not in... Day, you well, know? Cambridge University did a study where they took roughly 50 men and 50 women, and they um, basically put monitors, you know, on their scalps to... Um, to um, to, but they put uh, sorry sensors on okay. their skin to monitor their brain functionality. Okay. And they set these couples up, a guy and a girl, which uh, show up to sort of a makeshift water cooler, you know, similar to something you might find at work. Mm -hmm. And start a conversation. Those were the instructions. So literally 100% of the women, when it was like, hey, good morning, Fred, and the conversation started, all the women... Just all their verbal centers, a few of their emotional centers lit up, and it was just you know a conversation at work. But a hundred, also a hundred percent of the men, all the sexual centers were just like, "Is this going to be sex? Right. Maybe she's going to suck my dick. Maybe right. I could get some sex tonight from her. Right. I wonder if she's going to let me touch her titties." Right. Like this, this is how men think. It is. Period. I mean, really period. Even they can't help it. It's not like you have voluntary control no. over that. Like, like I, told I told you last episode, episode when a man. man it sees a, a, beautiful a beautiful woman walk by in some yoga, yoga pants, pants, great ass. Most, most men you always see turn around. There's yeah, just different look at it. of disrespectful of men are like, like, like just, just gawking, you know, some men don't, don't care. Right. But, but there, there is something that it's just you can't control. It's just where like, Yeah, there's a there's a biological component to that. Well, and well, so I think that that would be great. That's attraction, you know what I mean? Right. That's something you can't explain, just that physical uh, attraction, attraction to whatever, whatever you're attracted to is why, I don't know, why we're all here. It's, yeah, like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the way, it's sort of, you know, creation or God's right. way of uh, ensuring procreation. There you go. Right? Yeah, it really is. Because if it, listen, if it was on us, women, to right. procreate, 
it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. Things would be scarce. <laughs> yeah, they would because because we'd be in a bad mood or whatever. Right. right. And, and imagine yeah. if, if it was men, if men could, could have babies, babies, you know what I mean? I wonder would, how much they'd be wanting to How many, well, how, how big would the population be if men had babies oh my God. and could fuck each, each other and get babies? I mean, there they would all die. You all would die in childhood. A lot of dead babies. A lot of dead babies. You would be dead. All, all over the place, place. <laughs> a lot of abortion <laughs> clinics like there'd be yeah. abortion yeah. clinics and the mcdonald's right you know they drive, drive through abortion clinics, clinics with a beer, beer if men had to deliver babies you know because they, they wouldn't, wouldn't do, do it. it that's the hardest thing i ever had to do in my life deliver a baby deliver yeah. a baby yeah. no, no men, men don't, don't have a story that compares to oh a my god it's, it's like, like yeah, yeah. If, if a man had to have his dick ripped open Jesus Christ. No, are you kidding me? By the time, like my first pregnancy, my first kiddo, when she came, I was two and a half hours labor. There's some, well, no, I was 12 hours labor, but when it was time to push, it was two and a half hours of pushing. Normally it's like 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And by the time it was after that end of that two and a half hours, I was like, Doc, I don't give a fuck if you got to cut my leg off. Right. Do what you got to do. Get that fucking baby out. Get that fucking thing out of me. You know, and so, um, right. It's so he a cut horrendous your leg experience. Off. Yeah. So you have a part of it. He now. started to. <laughs> he started to. Like, <laughs> no, I don't have to cut the whole leg off. Just, just take like, part of it. Yeah. yeah I know. Mean, it was, um, I could, I could, most men couldn't even fathom the pain. And then, and then like, my, my wife has done it three times. I you know. know. It's crazy. It's hard. It's really it is. incredibly it's reason reason built built different. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard. And you're thinking while you're in it, you're thinking, oh, why the fuck did I do this? Right. This is a horrible decision. Right. And then when it's done and you look into the eyes of your baby, you do it all. Right. You do it all. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's the, that's the it's Lord nuts. right there. Yeah. It's really nuts. Actually, Actually it's, it's vagina. vagina. Yeah. <laughs> it's not nuts. Nuts don't do much. <laughs> so, yeah. Fakeness, I think. Yeah, we like know, there's we, nothing, nothing better than natural. natural Authenticity. So, so, yeah. And I don't want to knock people that get, you know, I might have fake breasts and I'm wearing this wig right now. So I don't want to be a hypocrite. No, you're not. And but, also, too, if, if some, some people, people aren't born, born with that, that. So, so whatever, whatever it takes you to get to that. And and uh, the, the important, important part is that you attract somebody who loves you, not, not attract to somebody who's attracted to your weave your, your weave, weave or, this, or your <laughs> surgery or right your ultra fat ass like, like they like, like you said, said they, they have, have to be attracted, attracted to you yeah well i you know and then the pressure i, mean, I think women do that yeah men primarily because pressure. yeah we, we have you know, financial pressure. pressure yeah you have a different kind of pressure we're mm -hmm. pressured to look good and you know, if a woman's face or complexion or hair doesn't look like the contemporary sort of sure. picture of beauty as we, right. you know, consume it on social media and sure. television and so forth and film, then there's this pressure, right? People getting their noses thin. Mm -hmm. and, well, the uh, Kardashians, like we said, are the best yeah. example, I think, of what a modern women think is ultimate beauty is the Kardashians. Which yeah, is crazy because if you see it is them crazy. When they, started, they don't. They look nothing, nothing like, like themselves. Yeah, and then and if you see them with none of their makeup on, they're just very. Uh, they're, they're not striking. Hmm. There's, there's nothing. They're just kind of average, right? And so you got these average-looking so bitches fake. thinking that they can just go get the right kind of lashes right. and hair and and look like right. right. And, and, and people, all these uh, Instagram models and Kardashian and, and so forth. And all the money and they have, they, they get, get the best. best of the best surgery. The problem, the problem is you have these other imitating, imitating women, women who get these box surgeries or they get their lips mm. way too big and in the injections. It looks like they just got stung by like bees. And yeah, I'd, I'd much, much rather see someone, someone with their natural, natural lips than these yeah. catcher men. If, if they're not ugly. I mean, even, even so, so, if they're yeah. a beautiful woman and I can tell, tell they're fake lips, lips, it's so it's unattractive. A, it's unattractive. Right? It's, it's like a different layer, another layer of Dude, and, and it's, it's right, right on your face. face. Unattractiveness. You might as well have a fake tattoo on your forehead that just, I'm right. just a fake ass. <laughs> fake I ass motherfucker. Or would listen to, like, I've, I've got, got some lips. lips. So if you, you love, love your lips, lips congratulations. congratulations. Um, but, but just, just for me personally, when it's too much, mm -hmm. it's just like, mm, you look like a clown. I can't believe the type of makeup, like the way that makeup has been evolved. Has evolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, there, I saw a bitch rolling on yeah. makeup on her face, like a big old, like, like a you know, Cool Whip 
Oh wow! Or like spray painting. It was like a big giant, like okay, skin colored blob, and then she took a roller. Yeah. Like you would do the corners, the edges, and you're fucking. Oh, yeah. Or you'll see women, women who have and rolling skin. it on. Yeah. And, and then, it ruins your, your skin, though. Like you'll see women who have. It's, it's like, like this terrible, terrible cycle, cycle where they, they have bad skin, skin and they, they cover. Hello, you're caking your face up every fucking day. Right. I yeah, don't know how women do that. Breathe. I really don't know how women no, do that. Women, women who do, do you can always tell because their faces look so smooth with this whole coating of makeup. And, and then you know that that's just cake yeah, done. And then you take it off and look completely fucking right, different. Right, smells like, like people are wearing delicious, delicious smells. I don't, don't want to knock anybody in case you're we're doing hating. it. I'm hating too much. I know, here, we're just knocking everybody's. Yeah, yeah, some lady's right sitting there like putting on all that fucking makeup. She's like, like fuck, fuck these you. motherfuckers. Fuck <laughs> you, Sam and Sam. I'm going to wear this shit. Yeah, yeah, but subtle, subtle makeup, makeup. I think, I think that's the thing. Makeup starts as an accent to beauty instead. An act, it's, as it's, opposed to inventing the actual beauty. People are like trying beauty. to invent right. looks think, on their I faces. I don't think anybody actually thought to be like, oh, I would never wear something fake. That's not me. But right. now, because it's become so accepted. Well, now, you know, that actually makes me think of something. Because back, you know, during like the 40s and the 50s, sure, it was a requirement that women had to wear makeup to go to work. Mm. You remember that? Sure. So there is a different pressure that we, so I get, you know, women have always, always had the pressure. To there's a that. healthy sort of median that you should find. Right. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I mean, I wear lashes and I wear my makeup, right. but I mean, I don't necessarily like to do it. And I certainly mm -hmm. am not going to do that shit every day. Fuck that. I do it. Look, I schedule my comedy show and my podcast on Thursday. So I only have to put on makeup once. Right. Right. And, and also, also it's. Not to say that I'm better, no. but that's just the kind of country gal that I am. I, right. I just don't have the energy. It's right. the energy thing for me. It's and like, fuck all that. Males, males have driven that culture of, yeah, yeah for, like, like you said, like wearing yeah. makeup to the office, wearing a skirt, like, hey, did you see what Sharon's wearing today? Right, right. The pressure to look sexy as a piece of meat for the men crazy. at the office. And that crazy. has led into the extreme of, oh, wow, they all look at, you know, Karen's lips. Well, I want her lips. Well, now you can have them. I wish I had her ass. Now you can have it. And it's this whole driven to the extreme that, okay, I'll be, it's destination happiness. I'll be happy once I get. And I think that's where it gets carried away. I mean, like you said, you got, you got some breasts and you're good. I love them. I mean, Dr. Clear, like great you're job. Not, you're not getting, getting your lips all done. You're lucky because that's kind of your only thing that you desired where, a lot of women with the boat. Yeah, my kids broke my titties, way. so I had to fix them. It wasn't even about size. Some people so I, have different, different titties, titties that are just a lot, you know, they're not. Yeah, apparently when I went to go shape. get my implants, one was bigger than the other. I had no idea. There you go. It was Learned something new. Every day. Notice. <laughs> every day. So you had to put a couple really? more CCs yeah, okay. in one than the other, but uh, I was fixing the problem. I didn't care. I had small breasts before, and I didn't care. And I still don't think I do. I wear a C cup now, but. That's, that's like, like the, the perfect, perfect, you know, I think C cup. Is, See I just, um, it, yeah, again, I didn't care about size. I just had, I mean, my first daughter, she, you know, the, the, your breast will make as much breast milk as your kiddo eats. Right, exactly. And so she was so hungry and ate all the time. My breasts were just huge and engorged yeah. the entire time. And so when she stopped feeding, they shrunk. Of course. And when I tell you, it was as it, it was like the California gold rush. And you know, like the panhandling, you know, and it's like the sediment just kind of like settled down to the bottom. Yeah, they go from like a grape to a raisin. Oh my god, yeah, I know. I used to have a joke. Samantha Raisin Tits Abrams used to be my little Ray, hey, old raisin tits. Holy shit. And so the only the simple solution was then to not necessarily get them lifted up. I could have fixed them that way. That would have sure. been more invasive right. and more and more expensive. Right, exactly. And so I had the implants put in as mm -hmm. a simple solution. I think, I think no. I mean, and, and, and I'm like, very, very happy that I did that. And, and look, look, I think, I think that's, holy I remember shit. When you came back, you were very. I mean, I think um, it's, that's, that's good. good. I, mean, I mean, that's something to make you feel, feel better. better. I mean, it's, it's like, like I guess the equivalent of I could all of a sudden make make it look like I these perfect packs in a six pack. Right. Right. And and it would be acceptable. This is really nice to look in the mirror. And maybe you're like, wow, this is like. Uh, wow, wow, it's like man getting their hairlines back. Of course. Yeah. I mean, of course, the hairline. You see me. I mean, I got my. Kind of widow's peak, peak, but it's every, every man, man is like just trying yeah. to freaking. That's, that's the, the worst. worst. I'm so, so thankful I have my hair because that right there is age. Like if you're bald, and I was like, you and know, it's if changed I was like this, this I'm, I'm a totally, totally different person. You know? Right, right. Well, you know, that's changing. So it's is like people. Well, you, did you do it for other people or did but you do it for you? And I did it for me so that I could look 
better in front of other people. Of course. I can see see that that now. Now, Here's here's something that that would be a protocol I'll say. Now, if my my hair was seriously thin, and it it does a little bit up here, and I was balding, I would would definitely definitely consider getting getting a hair transplant. Right. Because that, to me, my youth is everything to me. You know, I'm lucky. I got my mom's genes. And, and, and I, I feel, feel like, like I look young, young for my age, or I feel good about, about myself. myself. But, but I know starting to look old for anybody is hard to look in the mirror and accept that. And your hair for a man is, is the first place. place. So, so I could see yeah. if I wasn't going to do anything fake. fake. You know, because you know, I, I have little caps. caps you know, everybody said said chicken, <laughs> chicken and now I've been walking in the hills and running so much. And now, now I'm like, like have random guys like, dude, you got really nice caps. <laughs> all these men, men who compliment me on my caps. Because really you guys weird. are noticing it. Yeah, yeah guys, guys are noticing like, things. But someone's like, dude, what do, you, what do you do to get those like that? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'll tell you like, what. Because I have chicken legs. Everybody made, made fun of me. How funny. You do Liz, not have my wife. chicken legs I know, but since I've been out in California, walking the hills, we walk a lot, the steps, running. My, my calves, calves have gotten stronger. stronger. I got to tell you, there was a guy that I was considering seeing. I thought he was at the hands, most handsome face and had these really broad, strong shoulders and just had some girth to his upper girth. body. Girth. Love that word. And then I saw him one day in shorts. Oh, oh right. And he had these incredibly like ill-proportionate yeah, tiny yeah, stick legs. legs. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know. It isn't. No, there's and some. A, and I'm done. Right. No, no I just love like uh, soccer, soccer players' body. body. You know, you know a, lot a lot of those guys, guys they've got, got strong legs and, you know, yeah. lean and all that. So, yeah, yeah but that, that is, is, I would, I would never, never get calf implants, implants, but I was, but I was always so insecure about my calves because it mainly Liz. You know, Liz has big, strong calves and she's got little chicken legs, you know, compared to her. She's got a really athletic. I've never seen her wearing anything kind of. Oh, revealing. Yes. So yeah, uh, yeah. Was like, she was a gymnast. Oh really? Got, oh really? What did she used to do? I call her thicky. Yeah. What was she like? A floor routine kind yeah, of trick or on the bars? A little bit too. She was oh, a wow. soccer player, and played in college. So she's, she's a full-on athletic girl, and so her body is just you know she's there. You know, does Pilates like four times a week. So she's just oh, she still works. She's out. pushing her. Oh, oh, good right. for her. She's, she's a workout, workout freak. freak. She, she runs, runs really three, four times a week. And do you guys have exercise equipment in your home? No, no she, she doesn't, doesn't do that. that. She, she goes, goes to like a Pilates, Pilates class, and, and then, then she, she we run up and down our street. But yeah, she's and she's, she's a type, a type that she has that body, body where she works, works out a little bit. Like she has a six pack. You know what I mean? Like she. You can tell right away. Exactly. Yeah, me too. Me and my that's what you can tell right away. Me, my side. I can, I can work, work out a bunch. bunch. I still always, always have had this kind of little, little chubbiness about me, but mm. you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I've always been fairly thin. I did gain some weight on my with my with especially with my second child. Mm. But um, you know, I have one of those bodies. Like if you look at the fat women in my back home, my family, okay. we're very up top heavy. Okay. So if I ever did turn into a fat chick, yeah, I'd have I'd look like Winnie the Pooh on like little stick legs. <laughs> like, it goes right to my stomach and my arms and my cheeks. And yeah. I just blow up at the top. Oh, weird. Well, so fortunately, no, as long as it, your ass gets fat, you know, you can. I mean, I think that's the thing. A lot of women don't realize is, um, you know, guys are a lot more lenient with some some ass nowadays. Some ass. So let it go, ladies. Yeah, well, I can't. I don't have much ass, so I got to make sure that you know everything else. Get on them squats, Sam. I know. I yeah. did. I've done it before, but it's hard. Yeah. I mean, but it's squat, hard to keep me consistent. Squat. I need a person, a personal trainer kicking my ass. Right. Well, that's, that's why I like say Liz goes, goes to the classes. classes so you're, oh, because I'm accountable. For a month. I need, I need to to sign back See, up. you quit. I know. But <laughs> that's, that's what she's so, so good. good. She, she is like, like so dedicated, dedicated to working out. Yeah, that's hard. But I need to get back on Pilates because, yeah, I was doing that like twice a week. And that right away, like I've said, you're in there, a bunch of beautiful women. But also, also you're, you're, you can feel your core, core, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. everything feels tight. Well, you know what I do for exercise? I do the organizing. Oh, that's, right. That's yeah. really so hard for Right, I'm always sort of the moving. The organizing exercise. So that's know. why I stopped. That got, that started getting busy, and so I stopped. I, fired, I wouldn't say Shame. fired my personal trainer, but uh, yeah. stopped going. I feel like we are. No, this, this was, was a beautiful show, Sam. We really <laughs> touched on a lot. Yeah. yeah. Not a whole lot of sex stuff. We were talking no, but that's about okay. uh, I don't think action. It. Yeah, I think and you know, uh, authenticity. Many, right. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have to be always, you know, straight up porno yeah. talk. Right. Although that's all great fun. That's, that's great, great fun and all. Yes. But 
sometimes we have to talk about what is behind the attraction. So if you're out, right? Say just say hypothetically you weren't married and you're out and you, you see this chick and she looks so good to you, right? Yeah. Okay. Right? And then you guys have a few drinks and then, you know, you guys go out to the park and then... <laughs> Wait, the park? In the park. Wait, trying to get me arrested? After dark. <laughs> and then... The park after dark, okay. And then, like, you reach up and grab her hair and it, like, it goes... <laughs> it shifts. <laughs> right? Would you? Is that a turn is that off? The only thing that's fake? fake. No, there's more fake stuff. She looks great, but okay, there's more. What else is fake? Maybe you you're wondering if her tits are fake. That's you right. grab her, but see, my like my breasts feel not natural. Right? right. No, no, I, I love, can't I mean, tell. If, if, yeah, if, if you're, you're giving me the, the hypothetical, hypothetical, I'm single. I'm in a I'm in a dark park. Um, you're gonna go for it. Doesn't sound very comfortable. Yeah, yeah the, the wig, wig is, is not stopping me. <laughs> okay. The wig is not going to stop you because if, if the body's there and she's like beautiful, you're not like okay, right. whatever. The wig came a little loose, right? Not, who cares? Right. But if like if she tells you, even though her if breath like, and ass feel like, a lot of makeup, makeup and feels like, like she's, she's trying, trying to cover up some kind weird of smell, like, fake has a smell. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very, very with me. I'm very keen to pheromones and women who are who have too much. I don't like perfume. Really, huh, yeah, I, don't I don't like a woman in her natural, natural scent. I really, I really don't, don't like perfume, perfume at all. Huh. Like, like Liz, Liz, I don't, I don't think, think ever. Maybe, maybe sometimes, sometimes a little something. something but when I go rarely, out, like, yeah, natural, I have a day perfume, and then if I go somewhere fancy, sure, I have that. You know, sure, my Coco I, Chanel. I actually, I don't, I don't like like, like you ever walk past a woman and they're just they're whole fucking. It, it's like walking into the mall in the makeup department, and they're like, I think some women, some men are really turned on by the perfume smell. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously a little too much. much. But I, I just, just think, think it feels, feels like, again, it's, it's an extension, extension of what are you covering up? Like Nothing. I'm not covering up anything I've, after I take my shower. Well, like a woman, like, like after you take a shower. After I take my shower, I spray my perfume on. Your lotions on and stuff, like that smell alone is great. You know what I mean? I got to put my Coco Chanel on. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying I'm not downing. Um, but, but I'm not covering know. anything. I'm right, saying, I don't like think women who's got like, like so much like, cologne. You're like, dude. It's more like we're trying to smell better than the next bit. Sure, but I think sometimes it can be too much. Too much. Just like, and then it rubs off on you, and you're like, God, I gave some random woman a hug, and now I smell. Smell like, like I yeah, that's just too much. Club. Yeah, she, she didn't have it all over her clothing. Right. right. Yeah. And now, it, if it's all over her clothing, maybe she's trying to cover something. Oh, yeah, but I think it goes back to the makeup type. Yeah, too much makeup, too much perfume. I mean, if it takes you, I mean more than an hour to get ready or oh, it's gosh. just it i think you're doing too much no i mean it's sometimes you know like mom she takes her like half hour to dry her hair but then she's good to go right and she doesn't do much makeup really but yeah i don't do a whole lot of makeup i'll throw right. some lashes on an eyeliner and then right kind of so too much. Like little yeah. you know. throw on a wiggy or just uh you know brush my hair up mm -hmm. hey know. um but you know i i, I feel fortunate that um uh, Let's just say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feel fortunate that I, I think I have some good genes and um, you got good genes. Yeah, I don't really have to try that hard to stay in shape. So I know that everybody doesn't have that same um, ease. That's that. very lucky. Yeah, I Tell realize. about your book, Sam? Hey, yeah, I wrote a book. If you want to support this podcast and uh, if you want to laugh and learn, uh, I wrote a very hilarious and yet academic book called The Complete Player. Which you can find on Amazon. You can get the ebook or the paperback. The complete player is a neurological description that is a brain science of the love game between the player and his mark. And again, uh, even though we are, uh, the book is titled about players, it really does give you a comprehensive look into the dynamics between males and females and how our brains work when we process sex, love, lust, addiction and heartbreak. And so again, it's a hilarious, even though it doesn't look very funny, it is. And so you'll learn something and laugh along the way. And Samson, what do you got to promote? Oh gosh, Sam, what do I have to promote? <laughs> you know, I have uh, my stand-up special um, that I have at SliceComedy.com. Let me uh, throw this up real quick right here. Um, so that's my stand-up stand special, special yeah. um, that I'm going to have being released this summer. So I'm excited about that. Um, I also am going to be producing, producing other comedian stand-up stand specials very mm -hmm. soon, so I'm excited yeah. about that as well. And I don't know, that's about yeah, we're going to be working on upgrading your my studio. studio, which I'm very excited. My yep. slice comedy 
Uh, studio, that's right. We're going to do a similar setup to kind of what you have here. Um, but I'm very excited to kind of open up a podcast studio. Yeah, and be commissioning out that space exactly. for others that can easily want to start their own podcast. Right. You've invested some money into right. some, uh, yeah. some equipment. And so yeah. that's very exciting. Yeah, yeah you, you got to, you know, I'm doing, doing this kind of jumping, jumping off the branch again. It's like so many yeah. times in your career, like, okay, I got to, ju- you know, or jump off into the deep end again and swim. So yep. uh, we are. that's what we're doing. And, you know, like we were talking about, it's the beautiful struggle. Um, how people say, I guess, this is the best part of it, which it doesn't always feel like it. Because, um, right, right. You know, so, yeah. money depression, you know what I mean? It yeah. Very real. Well, I tell you, last week we were talking about money depression, and um, I'm over it now. I'm totally happy because I'm going <laughs> you got some dough? I got some dough. Well, it's okay. coming. I, you know, right. I'm going to go and do a big job. I, I commissioned uh, this Sunday. We're going to go fix a hoarding situation. Nice. So I'm going to be absolutely tired by the end of sunday evening sure um, but, but it my feels bank great. account is going to be a lot it feels um, great when you know you got money excuse, excuse me coming in, in. yeah it, it really um yeah. it just you know money it feels it, good not only because you're solving your problems but also because you you look turn around and go you know what i built this thing you, you built this and it's you yeah. know it, it gets back to thomas the train we just all want to feel useful you know like <laughs> yes. sir top of them have a very <laughs> useful <laughs> engine and that's right. all any of us want to feel that's is right. useful. So when we get paid, we're like, good, I'm useful. I'm I'm paying my bills. I'm paying this. And hey, I can afford to take my family out to dinner. I'm being useful. That's right. I feel like a useful little engine. And unfortunately, that's what money does. It's, that's what it's it the does. equivalent of, okay, we get this and now we can get that. So. Hey, well, this has been an interesting discussion about authenticity, what is sexy and what is not. Uh, A little tad about money and being useful (laughs) on the earth. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. You guys go to Amazon and search my name, Samantha Abrams, pick up my book and go to slicecomedy.com and check out what Samson Krupen is doing. He's my producer. This has been another case of the King Abrams. Straight up, I'm serious. They end up in class.